Good afternoon to the community, and I want to start just by thanking Mayor Garcia and our Board of Education. Um, without the leadership of Mayor Garcia, we would not be at this point in our plan to reopen schools. Um, and also just want to acknowledge our incredible Board of Education who, for every moment along the way during this pandemic, have been leaders, um, have helped us to formulate a plan, have asked good questions, and have helped us to get to this place where after 11 months of almost exclusively distance learning, we are thinking about reopening schools, and we are pleased to do that. So today I'm going to provide a little information about each level that has been discussed in our reopening plan with some dates in mind that the community can rely on. This information is also going out to our stakeholders in the school district this afternoon as we are here. Um, so I'd like to start with early grades. Our TK through fifth grade students will be returning to school on March 29th, those who opt to come in for in-person learning. Um, this week, the state will be preceded by teachers returning to their school buildings to acclimate to all the health and safety protocols, to get their classrooms ready, to communicate any of the needs that they have for their classroom before students return on the 29th. Um, that is new information to us in terms of meeting the adjusted case rate this week, um, but we have been planning since last spring to bring students back. We couldn't do that if all of our educators at TK through five had not had the opportunity to be vaccinated and will have their second doses before students return in March, and we'll we are grateful to the city for that effort. So our middle and high schools are held to a different tier. Um, they need to be in the red tier to return. So we have produced some tentative dates that we'd like for them to return, but that is dependent on reaching the red tier. So our grade 12 students are seniors who have been out of school since they were juniors last year, are scheduled, assuming that we meet, meet the red tier, to return to their campuses on April 19th. Their teachers will also come back. Middle and high school teachers will come back the week before to prepare their classrooms and to um, get ready for students to return. Grades six through eight on April 20th, that's actually a Tuesday because the Monday is a scheduled asynchronous day in our middle school program. And then April 26th is our plan for grades nine through 11 students to return, assuming that we get into the red tier between now and then. Um, I want to share a few of the additional health and safety enhancements that will take place, place in the hybrid learning setting. So a hybrid learning setting means that students spend part of their time at school and part of their time continuing their learning at home. When they are on campus, we have several different additional safety precautions that have been put in place that we want the community to know. Students who return to in-person learning will go through a daily health screening process, the same as school staff. And for staff that are working on our campuses, they already go through that health screening process. Students will be required to wear a face covering, and students' desks will be six feet apart from one another. Each of our facilities, down to every classroom, has a maximum occupancy statement in the classroom that is being used to determine how many students and adults can be in an individual classroom. Elementary students will stay in their cohort. That's their own group of students and staff while they're on campus, and that minimizes the interactions that staff and students have with others. One of the questions that has been asked is about sixth grade. So in Long Beach Unified, sixth grade students attend on a middle school or a K-8 campus, and because they move in a course, in, in a secondary course sequence like high school students do, they are not included in our reopening of elementary schools. They will come back when our middle school and high school students come back. And lastly, we have a plan for COVID testing of both staff and students. What that looks like, it is not required by the state or by the California Department of Public Health for us to have asymptomatic testing. But as an additional health and safety precaution, especially when we're in the purple tier and returning students to our elementary campuses, we will utilize um, asymptomatic testing in the form of anterior nasal swab that in many cases can be administered to adults by themselves and by children by themselves. We will have additional staff that will help with that process for those who can't administer it themselves. And so with these health and safety precautions in place, with all of the protocols um, that we have developed to bring our students back safely, we look forward to beginning that process on March 29th with our, our TK through fifth grade students. I think it's important to note that families are making a choice. They have the choice this year to stay in a distance learning setting um, with their teacher and with their, their courses, 
or to have their students return for in-person learning. And that choice is important to our families. Right now, our data is trending around a 50% want to return in person and around 50% want to stay in distance learning. And we'll see how that transpires in the next couple of months. But we certainly look forward to March 29th. I want to um, point to a couple of resources that are available on our district website. So in three languages, in Khmer, in Spanish, and in English, is our revised COVID-19 pandemic school opening and safety plan. Many of the protocols that I've just described are here. Um, in addition, the presentation that we made to our Board of Education last evening is on our coronavirus website page and is a good resource for community members who are wanting to know more about the plans um, and the dates in a, in a written format. <clears throat> 